Brand circuit summary. You size your brand circuit, short circuit ground fault protection device, and that's fine with the breakers, the fuses, anywhere between 150 and 300%, and that was table 430.52. And we also say, well, if, if you size it at those percentages and it doesn't correspond to standard size, then you can go up to the next standard size. You size your conductors at 125%, and then we're going to go to table 310.15B16 to actually select the conductor size. The overloads of heaters, while in reality, even though we're pointing here to the overloads of heaters, then it's in reality, we're not going to be taking 115 and 125% of nameplate to be sizing the actual physical overloads. Am I right about that? We're going to go and we're going to open up the cover. We're going to look at the nameplate rating of the motor. We're going to take the cover and we're going to be sizing it. This 115 and 125 would be exam preparation. And the only time you use it in the field is if you're going to be using fuses for that over current protection. So we're pointing it to that, but just want to make sure that's clear. Here's an example. Five horsepower motor, 230 volts, single phase, full load amps is 26. And Eric, you said that the FLC is going to be larger because we might be changing motors around, that the FLC is going to be changing as you change that five horsepower motor around. You size the overload. Probably shouldn't be, right, shouldn't be pointing to the overload device because the overload device is actually going to be selected by the manufacturer, but the overload calculation would be uh, 26 amps times 1.25. And that'd be 29.9. And if it were a fuse, which, of course, it's not in this example here, it would be no more than 29.9. Oh, Steve, read me 220.5. Or is it 2? About rounding of an ampere. 220. It wouldn't matter in this case because according to 430.32A1, we cannot exceed 29.9 amps. Well, you're saying, but there's no rounding in that? No. You it can't says, exceed it. You can't go over the percentage listed below, period. Nothing about selecting a rounding off. Okay, Steve, what is, but is there a rounding off rule in 220? Uh, what it says in 220.5b, fractions of an amper, calculations shall be permitted to be rounded to the nearest whole amper with decimal fractions smaller than 0.5 dropped. What's, what's 220.5? Read me the, 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 the basic. Is there a chart? A is voltages. Okay, but is there anything above A? Is there any? any no, there is no charging text. Two twenties branch. All right, we're not going to get at this whole thing here. I mean, the answer is twenty nine point nine in the exam. It's not, I mean, it's not thirty. We're on exam. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. And it'd be a fuse. You know, it's a twenty five. All right, uh, we take the twenty. Now, if we're going to size the conductor, then we're going to size it based upon the FLC, which is in red. Twenty eight times one point two five is thirty five amp your conductor, and then we go to table three ten sixteen at seventy five degrees C. And that'd be uh, ten. any 10, it wouldn't be THHM, we'll get rid of the insulation, just any 10 gauge wire at 75 degrees C. What's it rated, 35 amps? Yes, uh, 35. 35. If we can use an inverse time breaker, we're going to go back over to table 52. And the inverse time breaker is based on 250% of the full low current, which is 28 times 2.5. And does that come out exactly 70? Probably does. Yes. And if it didn't, we would round up yeah. because it says as an exception yeah. that we can go up the next size. Now, 70 amp breaker, 10 gauge wire, maybe you guys are feeling a little bit more comfortable about that because a 10 gauge wire is protected against overload by an overload device that's actually relevant size relative to the nameplate rating. That takes care of the overload. And this 70 amp breaker will be more than sufficiently sized to protect the 10 gauge wire against short circuits and ground faults. Yes, Stephen. Just putting that in perspective, emphasizing that short circuit and ground fault thing, we talked about that uh, a little bit when we talked about AIC ratings uh, of our overcurrent protection devices and the amount of thousands of amps of fault current there can be. So that 70 amp breaker is definitely going to open if you've got hundreds or thousands of amps of fault current. And in, in yesterday's DVD, we said circuit breakers today are made at how many thousand amps interrupting capacity? Your over the counter breakers typically 10,000. Right. And they're actually getting higher now, but generally they're 10,000 at a Home Depot or Lowe's or something like that. So, you know, it's designed to carry 10,000 amperes of fault. It's set at 70 amperes. And when you have a short circuit ground fault, it's going to go way above 70 very, yeah. very quickly. Oh, yeah. And the magnetic inrush current that's going to travel through that coil that's going to open up that breaker, boom, 
And we covered that in electrical theory and how that worked out. All right, let's go to uh, 43055 in the code. See if I can find that here. Here we go. 43055. Motor branch circuit, short circuit, and ground fault protection and motor overload protection shall be permitted to be combined into a single protected device where the rating or setting of the device provides the overload protection. If you, I'm not sure if this is a, this is a starter, isn't it? Yeah. Yeah, so this is probably not a good slide to show inside here. If you only have, and this would have to be uh, tapped off of like a feeder, if you only have fuses to protect the entire circuit from its point of origination all the way to the load, and all you had was fuses, that is it for that circuit. Then, if you size the fuses, to the overload device, then the fuses could be able to be used as your branch circuit, short circuit, as well as your overload protection. That's where you, then if, you know, you size it at 125%. Well, then the fuses could be your branch circuit overload protection. You don't have, you know, that, that's okay. That would be a very rare event that you would have fuses off of a source. Now, I had, uh, let's go with the example here. Motor draws 28 amperes. I'm only going to use fuses for overload, short circuit, ground fault protection. If that's the case, then you're going to size it at 125% of 28 amperes. Gives you 35 amperes. That's size based upon the overload protection. 35 ampere fuses could be used for short circuit, ground fault, and overload. What's the only drawback or, or downside of sizing fuses at 125%? To, to do short circuit ground fault and over. What's the only downside of that? Starting the motor. Motor might not start, right? So if you size the, the fuses at the overload, then you can forget the overload, but the problem is the motor and the inrush current might not start. Let me give you a little story here. I lived in the Coral Springs. I lived on a canal, and I had a boat lift. And some of you guys that uh, read my bio know what I'm doing. I'm a, I'm a six-time national barefoot, at least as of right now, I'm a six-time national barefoot water ski champion, and I'm a three-time world champion skier. You go to New Zealand, go to Germany, go to the United States World Championships, and in two years, hopefully, I'll be 61 years old. I'll be skiing at the World Championships in the United States in Waco, Texas in August of 2012. But that remains to be seen whether I, can, I still can qualify as one of the top skiers, 20 skiers in the world to do that. So I'm in Coral Springs. I have my boat. I have my boat lift, and every once in a while, every few years, we drop the boat lift down, we ski, and we come back. And I remember the very first time my lift was all the way up to the top. I mean, all the way up to the top. You know, it's one of those cables. And I'm thinking, that's kind of strange. And I get there, and I smell a smell, which I wasn't aware of, but I smell a smell, and my boat was burnt out. I'm like, what the heck is this? Half horsepower motor, this is exactly right here. Pull the motor out, went out, I think it was $400 put the new motor in, drop it back inside here, and then drop the lift down, put my boat back up, got it back up again, and go down. Four or five years later, I come home. After skiing, we're skiing. We, we kind of idle back up. My lift is all the way up. Now, I've already got a little bit of experience now, knowing that when the lift is all the way up, my motor's burnt out, I smell a smell. Well, I don't even get close to the motor. I, mean, to the, I can now smell this, this smell. I'm like... Get back there, pull the motor out. Now, I, I know what the motor manufacturer is now, right? Because I already pulled the first one out, so it's much easier to do the second one. Take it back out there, replace another $400, come back again, stick it inside there. A few years later, my motor is back up again. What the heck is going on? Replace the motor. And then, one day, I was in my backyard. I saw like an egret. Because over here, which you don't see it, there was a drum switch with a little piece of angle iron aluminum angle arm, that you would go this way for the motor to go down, or for the lift to go down, and this way for the lift to go up. Well, an egret had flew over, and it had that little, a little plate there, landed on it, but when it landed on it, what happened? The drum switch went down, egret's like freaking out, flies off, pushes off, pushes the switch down, and that's what burns out the motor. And so finally I realized, that's what happened. After, I think, $1,200, I realized, you know what I need to do? Shoot the 
I need to provide a <laughs> shoot eagle. <laughs> 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 no. As the corals bring, so. I need to provide overload protection. So I look at the motor nameplate. Who do I ski with? An electrical contractor. I mean, we could have done this, you know, a long time ago, you know, 12, 15 years ago. I said, the name is Wilson Electric, Bill Wilson down in uh, Coconut Creek. I said, Bill, give me a disconnect, get me a few. So we go over, we look at the motor. It has a full load amps of 4.9 amps. You size your overload at 125% of that. What's that number come out to be? Oh, here. So it's back to 1.2. Came out to be 6.125. So what size fuse? Six amp Six fuse. Amp. So I said, Bill, do me a favor, get me a six amp fuse, you know, fuse will disconnect, the whole thing. He gets the whole thing and he comes back, he goes, man, I got a problem. I said, what? He goes, I couldn't get a six amp fuse. He said, all I could find was a five. I'm like, man. Stick it in there and let's see if the thing will work. Put a five amp fuse in there, size at 100%, never had a problem. But also... Every single time it burnt on the motor, guess what happened to my branch circuit, short circuit, ground fault protection device, which was a 20 amp breaker for that circuit. It did what? What happened to it? Drip. 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 So I always had brown, branch circuit, short circuit, ground fault protection. What did I not have for the motor? Overload. 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 Overload protection. If I had provided overload protection and I sized it at 100% just because I couldn't get the 125%, I didn't know, I put 100% inside it, but, but Eric, it's an intermittent short duty, right? Yeah. That one was. It worked once, and then it didn't work again. <laughs> <laughs> it stopped. But that's true. It does stop at the end there. My point is, you can probably provide the overload protection at 100%. But as Mike, you said, every motor application is totally different. So fuse protection for overloads. Now, Square, um, Busman, Cooper Busman will tell you this. The disconnect that goes to your... Let me get a graphic here. They would recommend this. You're going to have a breaker back of the source. Okay? That would be a branch circuit, short circuit protection, size of 250%. They would recommend that you put a fusible disconnect before your starter. Because it's possible that your overloads and your starter could weld shut. Even though your overloads open, right. it doesn't drop out the control circuit. Now you have no over overload protection except the short circuit protection, but they would recommend that you size the fuses at 125% of the motor full load current, the nameplate rating, and that way you provide what? Overload protection here, as well as the overload protection of the starter. And based upon my personal experience, I would always provide fuse protection of the disconnect next to the motor in addition to the overload protection of the starter and size the branch circuit, short circuit, ground fault protection device in accordance to whatever the percentages that the code allows us to use. So now, back to Dennis's question. Well, what if the fuse doesn't hold at 125%? Remember that one? It doesn't exceed and you go up the next size and it goes inside there. I don't know, Dennis. Um, if that's a practical, in a real situation that would really, really happen in the world. But let's just assume that that is, that the motor, the application, just the way the whole thing worked out and unique, this, it does happen. The only thing I can do is go to 90.4, go to the authority, have a jurisdiction, and say, look, here's a scenario, here's a situation. I need a waiver of the rule to allow me to go greater than the 140%, whatever it is. But code-wise, we couldn't. Eric? Yeah, I just so how come your boat lift didn't have limit switches? A limit switch? What yeah. does that mean? Oh, yeah, well, like yeah, a garage yeah, door yeah, opener. Yeah. Once it yeah, gets yeah, up, Yeah, I know, whatever, you know. I, <laughs> you're an engineer, you put a limit switch. I just want to go barefoot, right? I told you, I'm like, I'm in there, I'm, I'm skiing, you know what I mean? I'm like, ah, I'll replace the motor and I'll come back. And $1,200 later, I'll put an overload device in the motor. <laughs> I, hey, I didn't say I was a very smart guy. But that's what I did. That I did learn a lesson that fuse protection is great. I, I would have just blown out a 5-amp fuse. That's all it would have cost me. And then I've been able to replace the fuse rather than have to replace the motors or the damage in the motor.